we bought this property, you know, as uncleared land, and we've trying to create our world here and have lots of flowers and vegetables and just try to be compatible, you know, with our environment. We have put everything we have into this place. We started with uncleared land, of course. We've built everything. We've made a lot of mistakes. Um, but we've tried to blend in with our, our surroundings. Um, we have about a 20-acre block we call the homestead area where we have the blueberries and the orchards and the gardens and the galleries and the horses and everything. Parts of the farm we've cleared, just sensibly cleared for pasture and for hay. But I think that when people come out here, they see there's another way to live. No matter what you do, you should be happy at it because you're gonna do a lot of it. Um, and there's other ways to make a living. Um, not everybody's cut out for this. And also, I think that this is a perfect example of don't look at the exterior and decide on what's inside of it. My approach to pottery is fairly simplistic. And every time I try to get complicated, it just doesn't work for me. So I like, what I enjoy doing is sharing the beauty of Brushy Fork Creek with other people. So I do a lot of plant impressions and um, I like to make things for the garden and for the kitchen. And um, I think that uh, it's very important to me that my pottery be functional and I like for people to use it because the more you use it, the more you enjoy it. So I guess um, celebrating the environment would be uh, a very big part of what I do with the pottery and I like the Chinese brush painting because it has birds and bugs and bamboo and flowers and all the things that are important to us. Well, um, a lot of times um, I get ideas while I'm sleeping. I'll have a thought in my head when I go to sleep and then I wake up in the morning and try to write things down so that's always been a really good inspiration for me and then just um, as far as walking around and like right now um, the grasses are blooming and going to seed so I like to when I'm out in the pasture with the horses I will just pick a few things that I think are really pretty and I always think about the negative spaces that will be created around the plant material and also um, the, just the veining like in leaves and things like that and I've had a really great time just making pottery out of large leaves like pumpkin leaves and gourd leaves and things like that. I just kind of see what kind of strikes my fancy and then take it into the studio and some days I feel like working on the wheel and I just get on the wheel and just make a whole bunch of things and I like to, um, like if there's a form I particularly enjoy throwing that day, I will do several pieces with that same shape and not necessarily trying to make them identical, but just to develop and refine the shape and the form. And some days, even after all these years, I'm not good on the wheel and then I just get up and I go use another process if I, if I want to continue to create in the pot shop. But um, the slab roller is a wonderful way to use the plant impressions. And then we also have an extruder, which is pretty fun and uh, you can make a lot of neat things with hollow tubes and uh, with, uh, Paul has designed uh, me some very nice uh, walls for casseroles. So uh, he has handmade me these dies so I can extrude out the walls and uh, then make a slab base any shape you want. So um, that has been very fun. And, and we just uh, work together, you know, as a team. We have always been really good about working together and we, we enjoy each other's company. And, Yes, yes, we're definitely a team. We've been a team for a long time. She worked in the studio with me in the wood turning, helped me build furniture when we were doing that before she became a potter. And even now, she will help me in the, in the logs. And sometimes we'll occasionally walk down and look at a form that I'm working on, and I can read her expression. If there's a real nice spot, spontaneous glow, I know it's good. If there's kind of one of these looks like, okay, why did you do this? Uh, but it's not a verbal thing at all. It's just we have been together for so long we can basically read each other and um, normally agree. <laughs> I like classic forms when I'm doing conventional work, work, work that is 
has straight edges and, and regularity to it. Uh, the one-third, two-third classic form, uh, the nice flow to it, the grace, and also when you pick up a piece, it should be balanced. And that can be really, really tricky when you're doing particular forms. The natural edge pieces or the natural pieces are very spontaneous. They, they talk to you when you're actually creating them. Um, it's just, it's intuitive. The piece talks to you when you're actually working. There are some basic rules which obviously you can break, but the grace of the piece and being able to accentuate it and look at it and the experience of being able to stop in time and to rearrange the piece on the lathe proper um, so that when people look at it, there's, there's this instant appeal to it. I want people to pick up the work and say, okay, I can use this, I can do something with this other than just being a dust collector. Uh, and there's a tactile thing too. It's fun to watch people pick up the work and touch it and feel it and turn it upside down and set it back down and look at it. Um, that's, that's really a pleasure for me to um, have people enjoy looking at it and, and then be surprised. When I'm doing what I consider production work, which is work that's going to be relatively close to the same size and end up serving the same function, I try to accentuate what's naturally there, but still I'm, ref I'm sort of restricted on, on the form and everything. Um, that's one style to turn, and the other is basically freestyle. And whether it's freestyle or production work, I still try to find something in the wood that I can accentuate. Um, when you're freestyling, it's more spontaneous. If I'm doing green work, the piece will tell me basically what, what to do with it. The tranquility, the, the natural beauty that is here inspires me, plus it gives me just a really nice quiet area to kind of wander around and actually work. Um, we have customers that come here and obviously since we do garden and we farm and raise blueberries and a lot of other things, but still the quietness is just really, really nice. It, um, you're not so cluttered. What would you like to see happen here, the gallery, the farm? I would like to just see it continue and expand as it's going because we've expanded or mushroomed over the years and as Tricia had stated, people enjoy coming out here. I think that's been a really, really good thing. I know that that was the whole reason for the gallery to begin with. I enjoy sharing this space with people and um, I feel that um, there's a lot of potential to have some workshops out here. I'd like to see some more of those things develop where we could share our space here, which is very peaceful and very healing with more people.